I had a lot of questions after the interview that I'd done with Daniel McGowan there um, at Yokao where he's fighting Rungarai about the, the training, the application sports science that they're using at HND. And I've been asked, what did I think of the training methods that they're using there? And something I'd like to kind of mention on that front is the difference between methods and principles. So the principles are kind of like the sports science, the ideas behind what you're doing to achieve a certain goal. And then the methods are your selections of the, the ways that you're going to try and, and get those principles applied to, to training. So you're taking something that's going to give you a benefit and then you're applying it to that particular group of people that you've got in the situation that you've got. So one of the things I like to make clear straight away is that you're trying to judge a snapshot of training and it's kind of you can end up taking that out of context. So try not to judge too much on what you see. Take it into account that there could be different reasons as to why you're seeing what you're seeing. So one of the first things I'd like to discuss is the use of cones for a basic agility training. And that's exactly what was going on there, basic agility training. It might have looked quite fundamental and overly simple, but in my experience, most of the Thai boxers in Thailand are very bad at agility. They're kind of good at long, steady running in a straight line. They can do their Thai boxing techniques, but if you get them to move around in a more sophisticated way, unless they're the likes of Sanchai, where they've got lots of movement vocabulary, most of them really, really struggle. So some fundamentals on the cones would be exactly the right place to start. So that's kind of what you were seeing there. Then the next bit that we saw, um, that was a really interesting drill that I do use to a certain extent as well, that I've not rolled out with people on my online programs, but I do use them both with myself and people that I coach one-to-one. -one, and that's like a metronome bleep. So that's really good for setting a pace when you've got a rhythmical movement. Um, and that high knee movement was a good drill for that. And they, that was being used as kind of like a, a, an endurance finisher on the end of a session. It's a good way of standardizing. I would say though, in terms of standardizing, some of those fighters weren't getting their knees up high enough and they were being a bit lazy. And that would be something to kind of crack down on standardizing a technique. Perhaps the knees have got to be lifted to level with the hips. So you've got a parallel thigh to the floor as a minimum and you've got to keep up with that. Otherwise you're, you're not getting the power output that you, you actually think you're getting. Another question I was asked was, what did I think of the use of heart rate monitors there at Pech and Gym? I'm personally a big fan of heart rate monitors in training, especially in Muay Thai training, because it's a good way of quantifying how hard you're working. Um, so that's very personal and you can target that for each individual. And it's also a good way of making sure that you're, if you're training energy systems conditioning at the same time as your skill training there, that you're actually pushing into the right zone to ensure that you're actually getting the fitness benefit that you're targeting and not getting something else. And talking about fitness specifically, another question that I was asked was, did I think that exercising in that zone five, which is typically 90% um, of maximum heart rate or above would produce excessive lactic work. And the reason why that could be the case, if you've not come across this before, if you train to develop the lactic energy system, you're building up all those waste products, you're exceeding the, the kind of supply rate that your uh, aerobic system can keep up with, then what happens is that you, you train to produce a body that functions predominantly in that system. The problem is if you if you default to the lactic energy system, you kind of gas out very quickly. So you don't want to spend too much of your training working that lactic system, which would be in excess of your anaerobic threshold for too long. So if you're doing too much of that, that's a risk you become a, a lactic animal that's going to gas out. So you really should be developing a system that's more aerobic with anaerobic alactic explosive knockout charges and then back to aerobic to recharge again. That's how you should train as a fighter. At the same time, as you get closer to a fight, you want to be able to tolerate that lactic buildup in your system so that it doesn't shut you down and you, and you end up struggling and gassing out as a result. So you don't want to overdo it, but you don't want to underdo it. So the use of heart rate monitors there can either make sure that you're not doing too much lactic work further from a fight and distorting your energy system so that you gas out, or that you're pushing hard enough when you're closer to a fight to tolerate that lactic work so that you don't struggle then. So you need to make sure that you get that balance right and that is unique and personal to each individual. Heart rates and heart rate monitors are good ways of actually targeting that specifically so that you get exactly what you're after. 
So lots of great things going on there at PetchND Gym. And we must bear in mind that we're looking at a snapshot of training in the videos, and we don't know the whole context of what we're seeing, what the facilities and equipment availability is at that time, where the fighters are in their training programs, and what the individual fighter needs. Um, group training is very different from targeted individual specific training. And if you're wanting something specific for you, that's where I can help you out. Click the link or the button below and we'll get started now.